Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome back to Ask the Cheese, man. This is episode oh, 264. That's that's a lot of che- Ask the Cheese, man. A lot of early Sunday mornings for me. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Um, thanks, everybody. And um, thanks to the newest member, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Where are we? There we are. Welcome to Tasty. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's <laughs> Uh, it's it's great to see so many members. Anyway, oh, I do have a list. Where's my list? There we go. Thanks to all the patrons. A special mention this week to Amber W. Thank you, Amber. And to uh, Habib for upping his membership as well. And thanks to all of the members, uh, past and present, without your help. Uh, we wouldn't have a two weekly show and videos and all that good stuff. And the curd nerd lights going off already. Who's the culprit there? It's Jim. Thank you, Jim. Just to see the light. Flashy light. Nice. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, mate. Really do. Okay. Um, videos this week. So you would have seen the triple cream video. Um, don't forget there's a... For those who order from the shop, don't forget that there's a coupon code in there. Uh, 10% off your next order at Little Green Workshops. Um, and the video was quite amazing too. I thought the cheese turned out so well. More... H- higher than my expectations, that's for sure. So, no, a really good little cheese. This week I'm filming and producing the Vegemite Cheese Taste Test. Uh, so that should be good fun. Um, there's a lot of people in the family who... Uh, who want to try that one so yeah that should be good uh and also we've got a very large gallery at 30 minutes past the hour where i showcase your cheese making photos so that should be pretty cool all righty let's say good day to lots of people um straight away we've had persnickety and uh, a good chitty chat there we've got valerie good day valerie lovely to see you uh we've also got patricia Hello, Patricia. Thank you for the photos. Shauna. G'day, Shauna in Tassie. Um, who else we got there? We've got uh, Just One from Toronto. And uh, Mahia from India. Hello, Mahia. Lovely to see you, mate. Uh, Paul. G'day, Paul. And Karen and Elliot and Habib. Uh, where else? We've got Eagle. Um... Jim, g'day Jim, love to see you as always. Jeff and Heidi, hello Jeff and Heidi. Um, Charlie, uh, just up the road, g'day mate. Who else we got there? Uh, Frederick, g'day Frederick, how are you? Or Friedrich. Um, Michael and Jenny, how are you both? Um, Johan, first time for a while by the looks of it. Um, who else? Ruth, lovely to see you, Ruth. Thanks for the photos. Got them. Um, Nolan, Fun Pants, ninety four. Good night, mate. And that's it, I think, so far. But there's lots of people watching, so welcome, one and all. Okay, so questions. Do we have any questions so far? Let's have a look. Um, no, none yet. <laughs> <laughs> so many people, but no questions. Oh, goodness me. And uh, Ruth has uh, something to say and says, um, Hi, Gavin, Kim and World of Curdners. Greeting from uh, San Francisco, where it's stormy and freezing. That'll be, that's unusual for San Francisco. Good cheese weather. Well, mind you, as you said, it's always good cheese weather. Um, I think there's a question. Um, Mahia had a question. Where is it? Trying to find it. It's way back. Goodness me, where is it? I've lost it in the... Uh... Oh, here it is. Mahia says, how to make hard analog cheese. 
analog is that different than digital cheese um i'm not sure if the translation's quite right there uh so how to make a hard cheese i think that's what you're trying to say uh see if uh you can fix that up i'm not sure what an analog cheese is um but there are so many cheeses on the channel mate i'm sure if you pick one that you like and then look look at the recipe you'll be able to figure it out but yeah i'm not sure if anybody can enlighten me what analog cheese is that would be amazing um julia well done good morning habib has a question uh says dear gavin for my five five day tilsit i added a pinch of geo to your recipe just to enhance the rind for brevi uh bacteria growth do you think the proteolysis will speed up could i have slip rind um uh yeah look the geo will help yeah it um it neutralizes the ph of the rind and brevibacterial linens likes that a lot uh and should grow a little bit more profusely uh, over the rind of your cheese um do i think the proteolysis will speed up maybe uh well with more with more brevi there it will speed up the breakdown of the pace so yeah uh i don't think you'll have a slip rind i'd never experienced it with a um uh with a washed rind cheese um however having said that i have in the past when i've used a cloth it kind of tears the um to wash the rind that is it kind of tears the um the rind if you use your hands um and just you know pour a bit of the uh wash on top of the cheese and then just rub it rub the cheese with your hands um i've never had a tear or slip or anything like that so it's good um but thanks for your question mate elliot says american cheese is an analog i think yeah, I, I tend to agree with you there. Um, uh, Nolan says, "Do did you end up aging any of your leftover guidos? If so, how did it go?" Uh, yeah, I did have a piece, and I've I've eaten it. Um, I left it for two months, and yeah, it did improve with flavour uh, somewhat over the fresher version of the cheese. So yeah, it it does. Uh, improve with age so if you're making a guido's hard italian cheese which um in the in the recipe it said three weeks but if you age it longer it does improve and you get a nice flavor and uh yeah it's quite a good um patricia <laughs> says uh how is the ways with way project coming along oh you're so funny oh, i love it um it's I think I've got about five, five out of the 14. Uh, but yeah, but you're funny. I love it. Um, Shauna says, I bit the bullet yesterday and made Shropshire blue starting at 9 a.m. Um, and had to go to bed at 11.30 p.m. Uh, I could only let, I could only let it dry for four and a half hours, not six before salting. Will it be okay? Yes. Yes, it will. Um, it may have a little bit of moisture, which will probably help, actually, uh, help it knit together. So uh, I think that's probably a good thing. Um, oh, we've got another super chat there. Goodness me, it's all happening today. Thank you so much. Uh, that's from Persnickety. Um, thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Um, and thank you so much for the twenty dollars. Says thank you for your instructional videos. You're most welcome, mate. And you've made a business out of it, which is fantastic. Um, next question is from Elliot, and said it's just cheese alternatives according to Google, like vegan cheeses and processed cheeses. So I wasn't far off. Okay, cool. So to answer Mahir's question. Um, <laughs> analog cheeses no i don't do any vegan cheeses um the cheeses that i do make are vegetarian if that helps because i use vegetarian rennet and uh, rarely do i use any um a products where an animal has been slaughtered so 
um, that's a good thing. So I use vegetarian rennet. Occasionally I use lipase, which is a byproduct of the of uh, culling a calf, but that's it. Um, anyway, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Ty says, do you know of a cheese that has a texture of Havarti, but has a blue taste? Mmm. Just trying to think. Not really. Um, cause um because Havarti has a uh it has an elastic paste it's it, and it's really compact it'd be very difficult to make a blue out of that you could look I'm not saying you can't you could probably could add some penicillium rogue 40 into the standard um Havarti recipe and you'd get a blue taste you may get blue growth all over the outside of the cheese because it's very moist and penicillium rogue 40 likes a good moist cheese um but i haven't i, I don't know of one commercially available so uh, because probably it is difficult to make so um tracy says uh making your shropshire blue today long mate yes it is indeed as <laughs> um shauna just mentioned it is a long make um and thanks for your membership tracy as well appreciate it over at cheeseneeds.com great little shop if you're um if you're wanting cheese supplies from uh canada on the west coast ish um cool cat says greetings and salutations curt nerds of the curd uh good evening le grand fromage that i think that's me the the big cheese lovely thanks mate mm. i need this coffee ruth says how's kim she's doing all right actually thank you ruth um she's uh in bed looking after the doggos at the moment having a sleep in as she does on a sunday morning um but we, we can talk privately about that um oops i missed one Ruth says, um, when, we, when will we see her again? Um, and the doggos must be getting big. Yeah, good, um, good question. Um, she's a shy girl, <laughs> uh, our Kim is. Um, I, don't, I don't know when we'll see her again. Um, I'll, I'll see her in a minute, but <laughs> I don't know about anyone else. But, um, and the doggos are getting big. Yes, they are. We need to do a video over on the Gavin and Kim channel for the doggos i need to pull my finger out and get my act together um eagle says uh uh watched you salting the triple cream curious why it wouldn't be easier to brine uh for more consistency thanks uh yeah good question so i i picked up the recipe partly from um, I think it was New England Cheese Making Supplies. I think Jim uh, wrote it. And then I, I found a video on, uh, well, YouTube, as you do, a bit like this one, um, which talked about there was a, a creamery in the US that made triple cream, uh, and they had a whole video on the process, so I managed to uh, figure it out. And that's where I got the uh, the salting uh, from so I can you know roll the the cheese um, because that was an extra step I put in that wasn't in the recipe um, and that turned out really well so I got a consistent coating of salt on the outside why they don't brine them they're very fragile uh, I certainly wouldn't brine them at that stage when I salted them uh, if I had to put them in brine they probably would have fell apart so that's why I dry salted them um, Chris says Oh, hello, Chris. Love to see you, mate. Hey, Gav. New to your channel and cheese making. What would be an easy recipe to start with? Thanks, mate. Um, uh, quite a few. So I've actually... There's a video on the channel. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, for everybody. So to find any videos on the channel, we go to the... There's a little search function for each channel. Um... Be good if I could spell beginners. Alrighty, beginners cheese with nose cheese cave. Gee, all the way back at Ask the Cheese Man number 18. 
Can I grab? Uh, yay, there we go. So, um, in the in the chat, there we go. Lovely. Oh, and another super chat. Thank you so much, Shauna. Um, so, um, Chris, hopefully that answers your question. There's lots. Just go and watch that video, and you'll see lots and lots of, I think about five or six, amazing cheeses to make for beginners. Um, Twenty dollars Australian. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you for all your help. I appreciate it, mate. Um, and thank you for your encouragement and sending all those amazing photos in. Um, it's it's a pleasure as always to show them. Ooh. Uh, this one's from Karen says I'm going to make a second batch of the guidos the first one I did everything wrong and it still worked out That's cool. Um, this cheese making thing is like magic um, I'm slowly making my way through sorry. I'm making my way Through your course slowly. Thanks Gavin Appreciate it Karen and uh, yeah, don't forget if you got any questions during the course put them in the comment make do a comment and I'll answer them within 24 hours um so yeah it's uh it's a well i personally think it's a great course because i wrote it but uh yeah there's a lot of people who have uh that are in the chat have done the course which is good um and well done on your guidos even though the first one was that it was uh uh it still worked out that's good okay um uh, Mahia says, which rennet and culture should be used in cheddar cheese? Uh, good question. So let's go and have a look. Let's consult the channel because I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, alrighty. So um, over on the other screen. So we've got cheddar. And we're going to have a look and skip through, find the recipe. Here we go. All right. Stop. Stop. Right, so I used uh, mesophilic culture, and I think I used MO30, which is the same as MA11. Uh, they're the two cultures that are quite interchangeable. Um, even you can use, um, there's a Mad Millie one if you can get it, that just says mesophilic culture, which is the same as MO30. Um, the rennet that I used, I used um, Chimax Plus which has an IMCU of 200, which is the strength of the rennet. It's a single strength vegetarian based rennet. So there you go. Don't forget the Anato to get a little bit of color into it. So yeah, hope that helps me here. Um, but yeah, go and have a search on the channel. There are so many cheeses. Okay, um, let me just uh, get back. So next question, righto. So, um, Karen says, hey Gav, I made your feta recipe. It's quite easy. It's been in the brine for a while now. Uh, any ideas on how to reduce the saltiness before eating? Uh, there's a couple of ways. Feta is always a salty cheese. Let me just say that up front. Um, so you can soak it in milk for a little bit. Um, I would not soak it for more than um, 30 minutes and that the milk actually draws the salt out of the cheese and makes a little bit less saltier. Um, you can reduce the brine concentration uh, down to 10%. And there is a blog post on how to make a 10% solution. Let's see if I can find that. See how good I am today. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Right. So, and there's another super chat. Goodness me. Uh, and Patricia, you are a gem. Uh, thank you so much for yours. In lieu of no flashing lights on Wednesday, uh, you're a treasure. Thank you, mate. Um, anyway, back to the question. Uh, where is it? Where is the question? Uh, the brine, yeah. Right, so let's go to uh, Little Green Cheese blog, which is my blog. Uh, and this post here, which is why cheese is essential. Anyway, so down here... I've got a little brine chart. So if you want to make a 10% brine solution, uh, if you add 111 grams of salt per litre of water, you get a 10% brine. So what I normally do is um, I add 
um, for an 18% solution is what I normally add is um, uh, 220 grams per litre and that gets me an 18% uh, percent solution so but you can take it down to 10 um, uh, it's fine normally they uh, salt the feta in uh, seawater or concentrated Mediterranean seawater which is about 8% between 4 and 8% so 10% is, is what I normally use now for, especially when I use goat and sheep's milk. Anyway, I'll put the link to this post uh, in the chat for everybody. If they want to have a look on um, the little brine chart. Um, there we go, that's back to my head. Um, yeah, so that should help out. Uh, yeah, cool. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Karen. Uh, Paul's got a question and says, Hi Gavin, I usually use raw milk, but made a few double Gloucesters with store-bought milk. The cheese tastes okay, uh, although it's not as salty as expected, but the concern is that it has a slightly rubbery texture. Uh, yeah, that'll be because the uh, if you use store-bought milk, which is usually homogenized, you'll find... Uh, that uh, you'll find that the fat has been broken down and you won't get the same texture in your cheese uh, as if you had have used raw milk or unhomogenized milk. So, yeah, use the best quality milk you can, obviously, if you can. Um, but, Paul, that's what happens. The, the, the homogenized milk does change the texture and the flavor of the cheese as well. There we go. Um, Donna, hello Donna, lovely to see you. I made some Saganaki cheese way back in 2018 and airtight sealed it. Uh, what do you think I should expect when I cut it open? Um, a fairly strong sort of cheese. Now, Saganaki cheese, um, there's no such cheese as labelled as Saganaki. Saganaki is actually the pan you fry the cheese in. Um, so if you're talking about um, uh, Gaviera or Gra Graviera, sorry, or uh, Kefalotiri, um, those sorts of cheeses can be used as a frying cheese that, you know, flour and then, you know, you fry up. Um, but what I should, what I would expect, it, I would expect 2018, so that's uh, five years, it should be fairly strong and it should be very flavoursome. So that's what I would expect. Um... Donut usable says I haven't checked in for a long time. Hope you're doing well. Indeed, I'm here. <laughs> That's a good start. Uh, Finka from... Um, oh, I can't remember what country you're from, Finka. Sorry, but yeah, Shropshire Blue is worth the time. So somewhere in the Caribbean, I'm pretty sure. Um, Barraquette Adam says, What cheese do you recommend for a complete starter? Um, I posted the link for that one already, but for a complete starter, somebody who's never made cheese before, try paneer. It's very simple. Indian cottage cheese. Uh, it's milk and acid, and then you press it a little bit, add a bit of salt. Nice. Very nice. Or even whole milk ricotta is always good for a laugh. Um, both of those videos are on the channel as well. So I hope that helps. Um, Persnickety had a suggestion, though and says uh, cottage cheese, queso fresco, and feta. Nice. Another curd nerd light. Um, <laughs> this one's from Jim. Thank you, Jim, again. Uh, just because I like seeing my name in the top right corner. Ah, oh, yes. I for, the, these things here, I forget they're actually here. So, but yeah, very cool. Thanks, Jim. Well played. Um, <coughs> goodness me. Thank you so much. Um, um, here, we've already asked, answered that one. Right. Um, Nolan says, how would you change your brine time when scaling a batch size up or down? Any special considerations if it's the same size batch, but the mold diameter is different? Um, the thickness does matter of the cheese. Um, but usually it's about uh, 12 hours per kilogram um, 
But uh, Persnickety says here, uh, I usually go with one to five hours per pound. Uh, but what's your cheese should it begin to split? Yeah, I'd actually go a lot heavier on the salting than that. Um, and you notice that my cheeses are about between 1.2 and sometimes 1.5 kilograms. And a lot of them are, are um, salted or brined between 10 and 12 hours. And I find that is the best absorption of the salt. So um, some may be a little bit less. Depends on the density of the cheese as well. So how hard you press the cheese. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's my rule of thumb anyway. Um, obviously with small cheeses like Say you do a camembert or something like that, two hours tops, because they're very, they're not dense. They're, they're very um, soft cheeses and tend to absorb the salt a lot easier. So anyway, um, Eagle says, um, thanks, re the salt preference answer, made some jalapeno smokies using Stilton from your recipe yesterday. Flavor outstanding. Is that where you stuff the um, the jalapenos with cheese? I'm not sure, but it sounds pretty good. Um, uh, next, oh, Dr. G, g'day mate, how are you? Um, Eric, hello Eric, lovely to see you. Uh, after about 20 days of aging, the surface of my tome smells quite moldy. Yep, uh, it will do. Um, I wash it with brine almost every day. Is it a good sign or bad sign? It's a good sign because um, what that smell is, probably not so much mold, more like yeast. Um, so I think, um, well, I don't think, I know, that is normal. A tome, tomes are fairly moist sorts of cheese and they do tend to um, gather mold and yeast on the outside if you're washing it. Now, you should find after, at, at about 30 days, you should find that the, um, the surface of the rind starts to dry out, which is great, and so do the, the molds. They won't be, you know, they, they won't be moist anymore. So the, the molds will go dry, and the best way to do that is just wipe them off with a soft cloth. Um, I've even used a soft brush to just gently um, brush away the, um, the mold on the outside and you get a nice a thickening of the rind which is perfect for a tome a tome needs a little bit of a rind a natural rind um, so it should dry out soon and then you should start to notice that um, so start easing off on the the washing to get rid of the mold let it dry out a bit and uh, and then just brush the mold off but yeah it is a good sign that it smells like that so um, that can only be a good thing um right next question is or well, statement um it says stuffed jalapenos on the grill are amazing especially with ham or bacon oh, i've never tried that either i've actually got a um a single jalapeno bush growing in the garden it's just starting to bud now right near the end of summer so yeah that uh <laughs> that it takes it's so long we've had such a cold summer so it they really hasn't done it justice but we're just starting to get tomatoes now um in the veggie patch so they're amazing um we've been going through boccaccini and mozzarella are buying um the store-bought um uh the buffalo mozzarella from shore river oh amazing especially with some basil which i've successfully grown grown in the garden and some um and some of the cherry tomatoes just amazing so but yeah i'll have to try stuff jalapenos i'll have to make sure that they're big enough to stuff of course but yeah grill on the grill perfect um persnickety says gavin weber bacon in cheese is it possible without things going rancid um no not so there's there is a way to do it properly um and i think we did see one of the cheeses in the cheese a day challenge it was havarti with bacon um which was quite nice but you could see that it was definitely processed after the fact so 
uh, mature your cheese as normal. We pick whichever one you want. Um, fry up some of the best bacon you've got. That's it's time for the gallery, but fry up some of the best bacon you've got um, and dry it out and try and get rid of as much oil on the outside as you can. Uh, and then um, break up your cheese, put your bacon, mill it through the whatever the the the, um, the broken up cheese, and then repress it again. Um, and if you've got any bacon seasoning, you could always sprinkle that through the cheese, the curds as well, and then repress it. And it should come together fairly well. And you'll need a fair bit of pressure. Um, and that's the best way to do it. So after the fact. Okay. Um, and just before the gallery. G'day, Anthony. Lovely to see you. You made it for the gallery. All righty, let's bring it up. Um, so many uh, pictures today. They're all fabulous. Um, let me just uh, find the thing the thing um oh goodness me what have i, I missed something here um uh, ba, 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 ba. sorry i'm just uh, finding there was a comment on a video that uh here we are where the heck is it Um, okay, so hang on, let me just uh, oh, got things popping up everywhere, all over the place. Rightio, let's just that's a sneaky peek. Let's get that out of the way. Right, so this uh, this first picture is from Michael, aka Persnickety. Says, "Howdy, Gavin. I hope this one makes it in time." Yep, just. Uh, this is my second blend, made from Parmesan whey uh, in early January of 2023. It's been through two decants and is in the clarification stage. Uh, it'll be ready when I can read through the demijohn, indeed. Sadly, I didn't take pictures of the first attempt, which I made from Pepper Jack Way last year. Uh, turned out rather nice with a 14% um, alcohol, alcohol by volume and a bit of fizzy tang on the tongue. That'd be, yeah, nice. Um, I hope this finds you well, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Um, great looking bland. I like it a lot. But yeah, it will take a little bit of time to clarify, as they all do. Um, but once it is clear, then it's ready to go uh, and uh, serve to your, your bestest mates. Okay. Um, the next one is from Michael and Jenny. And Michael and Jenny says, Hi, Gavin. It was time to open our stout cheddar. Um, it was vacuum sealed on the 19th of October, 2022. The stout was home brewed by my brother. Nice. I like that. The cheese is nicely salted and a mild stout flavor, not crumbly. Uh, a little marbling with some small mechanical holes. A lovely cheese. Indeed it is. Now I think there's a, a close up. There we go. So not so evident. You can see more marbling a little bit on the outside, but the good thing about stout cheddar, it doesn't really, um, well, our version anyway, you, you see a little bit of marbling around, you know, where the chunks of curd were, but the flavor is subtle, and that's what I like about it. It's not too overpowering. So, well done, Michael and Jenny. Um, really good result there. So, the next, um, this one is from Patricia. Uh, and Patricia's got a couple of photos here. So this is, um, there's a story between this. This is, uh, Patricia says, Hi Gavin, here is entry number six in my Sweeney Todd series of cheeses. Uh, it's called Fop. The inspiration, inspirational lyrics from the song, uh, Have a Little Priest. Uh, Mr. Todd says, What is that? Mrs. Lovett says, It's Fop, finest in the shop. Since a fop is an individual who is overly concerned with physical appearance, also known as a dandy or a beau, I wanted to make a cheese that was showier on the outside than the inside. So the highly textured Manchego mold was an absolute necess necessity. Necessary. I'll get it right in a minute. The cheese used the Manchego recipe with cow's milk instead of sheep's milk. The wild pressing egg error i think it's got a little bit of an angle you can't really see it in this shot but it there's an angle uh resulted in eye catch and eye catching 30 degree slope on the top wasn't intentional 
but made the cheese kind of look jaunty. Um, it was aged 60 days with a natural rind just before taking the photos. It was dappled with edible gold foil, thanks to Tracy at Cheese Needs for the gold. Shout out to Tracy. Finally adorned with ribbons, peacock feathers, and the satin rose. Uh, and it tastes better than it looks. Hang on, we got the inside. Boop, there we go. Uh, if you can believe it, the paste is smooth, nutty, and no bitterness. That natural rind is pretty funky though. Yeah, that looks amazing. Great looking cheese. I love the fop. I'm going to have to make another Manchego. I've got to get myself some Manchego molds. I'm pretty sure that Tracy sent me through a supplier. Um, but uh, shipping to Australia was a little bit OTT over the top. Um, she goes on to say, Patricia goes on to say, I hope you and Kim are well. Talk to you later. And she did. She sent me another photo. Right. This is an interesting uh, photo. It says, hi, Gavin. This isn't a problem per se. Uh, as I'm sure I can fix it myself with some brine, but was so fascinated to see how opportunistic Penicillium Roke 40 can be, so I had to share. Since I wouldn't be fussed with babysit babysitting a natural rind on the Comte style I made in late January, I waxed it and left it in the cheese cave to age. When I flipped it yesterday, I could see discoloration under one section of the wax. Uh, this is the first time I've experienced mold growth under wax. The first thing I said was, wow, this cheese is absolutely determined to have a natural rind. Uh, today, I removed the wax to expose the mouldy rind for cleaning and was amazed what I saw. The mould had gained access through the wax via a tiny imperfection. However, it appears that it could only spread... Uh, sorry... It appears that it could could spread only by finding some space between the rest of the wax and the rind of the cheese. And that space turned out to be the otherwise imperceivable crosshatch weave impressions left by the cheesecloth during pressing. Check out that photo. I found it to be a remarkable sight. All the best, Patricia. Let me, let me zoom in here. Um, yeah, that is amazing. So, I don't know, entry point could have been maybe in the middle. And yeah, if the only place there was oxygen, by the looks of it, as Patricia rightly says, is the cross, is the little indentations that you can hardly see in the surface of the cheese left behind by the cheesecloth. That is amazing. Don't you just love uh, Penicillium Rogue 40? Where there's a will, there's a way with that mould, I tell you. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm glad you cleaned it up there, Patricia, and uh, re re-waxed it. Um, but, yeah, hopefully your Comte works out fine. Um, I'm pretty sure you told me that you used the recipe from New England Cheese Making Supply. Just correct me if I'm wrong, um, because that's the one I'm thinking of using as well. Okay, and next picture is from Ruth. And Ruth says... Um, hi Gavin, it was so good to be back in the live chat after so much time. This is for the gallery, preferably the weekend, um, and you're here, which is great. Um, so it is your first Bell Paese, and it's nearly four kilograms, which is nearly eight pounds, I think. That is amazing. Using a Manchego mold by the looks of it. Well done, Ruth. That looks huge. And oh, can we zoom in a little bit? Bel Paese, cultured with love. So, and a little picture of Italy there. Very nice. That's your sticker for the for the cheese. Uh, and here's your latest Jarlsberg. And that looks pretty awesome. Look at that. I love the eye development. Um, with the home cheese, mate, you, you're never going to get perfect eyes, honestly. And I think they look lovely, personally. So, well done, Ruth. Um, is there another picture? Yep, there's your... Your sticker for Yalesburg. Nice Viking longboat there. Very interesting. Thank you, Ruth, for sending those in. We've got a... This one's a cartoon. <laughs> um, this is from Scott. It's a Garfield. I hope I don't get copyrighted. 
Uh, thank you, Jim Davis, for writing it. it. says, we may have our differences, but we can all agree on one thing. Burp. I didn't do the burps. Uh, cheese is awesome, indeed. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks for sending that in, Scott. Um, hopefully, Mr. Garfield man won't come and get me. All right. Uh, we have two photos from Valerie now. It says, hi, Gavin. Um, on this Marsdom... I've already waxed it once, but the Propionic Shimani must be very potent. Uh, should I just wax seal it now? I'm sure there are eyes. Uh, it would be ready to try on the 16th of March. Reason I was slow with the date because it was back the front to what I'm used to. Um, yeah, I think there's some eye development there. Uh, not so sure how much because it hasn't bulged top or bottom. It just seems to have bulged on the sides, which is okay. Um, I'm sure you've got some eye development in there. Yes, it would be safe, Valerie, to vacuum pack that. You've got your eyes now. And then don't forget that when you do that, pop it back into the cheese fridge at you know a cooler temperature because that stops eye development and um, stabilizes the paste. Uh, okay, so very cool. Uh, and there's another one, a bit small, but here we go. A little bit pixelated, but that's okay. Says, I'm finally venturing into Geo and Brevibacterial Linens. Um, I have a lovely white coating on the back side of this Budakaser from New England Cheese Making Supply. That's the recipe. But these molds do not look inviting. I, uh, I've never used Geo and Brevibacterial Linens in a Budakaser before. Um, but yeah, the black molds, uh, not so good. So I would, um, personally, I'd wipe this off with a brine solution. Um, they do not come off easily. You have to give them a scrub. Um, yeah, it'll be safe. You just need to give it a bit of a scrub and they do come off eventually. Um, and you should be good to go. Uh, this one should also be done in mid-March. So yeah, give it a scrub, brine solution, uh, to keep it coming back, just uh, put a little bit of vinegar into your brine solution this time. And it should keep it at bay a little bit. Um, worst comes to worst, vacuum pack it and uh, you won't get any more moulds at all. Um, Valerie says, thanks so much for your advice and teachings. I love learning from you. Thank you, Valerie. I love teaching you. <laughs> okay. Uh, very cool. I think that was the last one. Yes, it is. Um, so, thank you one and all for sending through all your lovely pictures. How do you send them to me, you ask? Of course you are asking that. Um, what you do is you go to the channel, as you do. Uh, where is it? There we are. So you go to the channel page and we go all the way to the end. There's a little arrow. Oh no, there it is. About. You go to the About tab and you click on that and you go down here, Details. For business inquiries, view email address and send it to the email address that is hidden in there. Now you'll only see this on a browser, on a desktop, laptop or tablet. You will not see this on uh, using the, the YouTube app on, um, uh, on an iPhone or uh, Android. So yeah, it doesn't work on the app. You've got to go to a browser to find the email address. And I'm not going to click on it because I'll be spammed uh like there will be no tomorrow anyway so that's how you do it thank you one and all for sending those in fabulous i love a nice big long gallery that was really good i'm sure we've got some more questions now so let's have a look um way back when um uh another krogan love says um stuff jalapenos with cream cheese strawberries and honey panko crumb them then freeze them then deep fry them my goodness that sounds amazing i love it i love it thanks for the suggestion for the jalapenos anthony says <clears throat> for when the gallery is done uh, i made the triple cream and it's aging i doubled your recipe using two larger basket molds since i didn't have the smaller ones i'm assuming the aging will take longer um, I would still try one, Anthony, at um, where well, you can have it. You can eat them as, as quick as four days uh, for a very fresh triple cream. Um, 
and I would uh, test still test one at 10 days, but you can age them longer. But try one at 10 days because um, that's when the um, uh, the back, lactic bacteria really starts to kick in. So you you don't want it too strong for a, a triple cream. Um, I found that 14 days was perfect. Um, and then I wrapped them and uh, I tried it. We ate one, wrapped them and then put them in the fridge. I still have a couple in the fridge now, but I'm, it's quite a while since I made them. So I don't know what they would look like. Hopefully they'll be okay, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, they, they may take longer. So, um, uh, Oh, goodness me. Uh, one is 830 grams and the other one is 864. So, the bit, yeah, they they may take a little bit longer. I don't know if you'll even get white mold on them um, because white mold cheeses tend to be a lot smaller um, and the mold seems to grow over the surface better when they're smaller. Um, just something about the physics of it all. Um, but, yeah, I... Yeah, test test all the time okay um uh, lots of people saying the cheeses in the gallery were amazing um uh, jim states that uh gav makes meat as well as cheese search his page and you'll find his video on the process indeed indeed uh there is um Uh, I'm a mead maker too. The Canadian Gavin with poetic license. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'd love to see a photo of it. Um, Krogan Love says, Penicillium Rake 40 is an amazing organism. Yeah, it gets into everything. Uh, once you've got it, difficult to get rid of, but yeah. Um, uh, next, I'm looking. Oh, here's a question from Patricia. Um, Gavin, my Comte recipe came from the Polish YouTube uh, cheesemaker. His channel is called Domo... Uh, Righto. Sir. Yeah, I saw that channel. I went... I, actually, I had a look at it, and um, I'm surprised it's not more popular, Patricia. Um, it could be because, well, A, it's Polish, and B, uh, there's no... There's no... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no voice track. What's, the, what's that called? No overdub. Um, commentary. It's no commentary. Um, and yeah, I look. I I looked through it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, and the translations were a little bit difficult for me. But yeah, I I'll have a look at it again. Um, but yeah, I got, I think I got that recommendation from you before. Um, Uh, right, next question is from... Oh, here we go. We're talking about brewing. Um, bartender help or star sand, or do you have another sanitizer? Star sand. Yeah, that works. It even works for cheese stuff. So um, I think some, some of the cheese makers in the chat actually use star sand as well. So, um, okay. Um, Susan says, my... Manchego mold arrived this week at it cost $75 postage goodness me I did buy another mold so it spread uh, so at least this at least spread the cost a little hope to use the mold next week yeah they're not cheap um, and the postage is not cheap uh, for me importing them into the Australia from Spain um, was it, it was going to put the price up so high that it would have been the most expensive mold on the in our shop so that would have been a bit of a problem because i don't think people would buy them personally look but who am i to if i got some people probably would buy them so who knows um all right um uh mo here says uh me here my, my, i'll get it right in a minute how much should cheddar cheese may moist I think Google Translate's having a bad time there. Um, how moist should it be? It should be fairly dry, actually. So cheddar cheese should be dry. It's a dry cheese. Um, 
there is a little bit of moisture but it certainly is not um once you've got it in after the final press it usually air dries within a day easily so um heidi says uh joining super late just made it um welcome heidi lovely to see you um uh would your ripening box keep the blue molds from spreading in the cheese cave uh they do but i can't get hold of them oh we got another super chat thank you so much who's that anthony thank you anthony appreciate it uh my turn to show your my appreciation to the guru you, guru you are awesome thank you anthony appreciate it mate and thanks for the ten dollars us appreciate it um yeah, look, the ripening boxes do. Unfortunately, I can't get hold of those red ones anymore. The manufacturer discontinued them. And Kim has been on a mission to uh, find a substitute or make a substitute. And we've been ordering bits of um, you know, both boxes and mats and all sorts of stuff from so many different retailers that we just we still haven't come up with a solution that's as good as um, the original red ripening box, the wide one. And Mad Millie, in their wisdom, discontinued their ripening box as well. So I can't buy that wholesale. So, yeah, I'm still stumped <coughs> at the moment. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, uh, Patricia says, narration. Of course, that was the word I was looking for. I didn't have enough coffee, Patricia. Uh, Nico says i work in intellectual property the letter from grana padano is amazing amazing understandable to some point but their best move was to apologize letter uh was the apologize letter which makes a lot of sense to me too you know what let's 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 get real here um the apology letter only happened because uh, the cheese making community on Reddit, who posted it and made the, the video go viral, all went to the Grana Padano Consorzio webpage and complained. Um, and they complained profusely to the big wigs at, um, uh, at the Consorzio. So that was the only reason. I got an apology letter. If I didn't make that video, the original one, where you could see my restrained frustration, um, then nothing would have happened. I would have had to take the video down anyway, regardless. I, I don't have the money to fight stuff like that or ignore it. Um, but yeah, so that, that's that's what happened. That That's the real reason they sent me the apology letter, so... But very cool. Thanks, uh, Nico, for um, bringing that up. Thought I'd get that off my chest. Anyway, uh, what time is it? We've got seven minutes to go. Uh, Foodies Explore says, new to your channel, totally love it. Thank you, Foodies Explore. Um, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy the cheese. Um, Jim says, subtitles. Yes, there was subtitles, um, but uh, there's no narration. Uh, so, yeah, it managed to convert... I could understand most of it. So anyway. Um, uh, Heidi says, so glad to know that. This is about the ripening box. I have two of your ripening boxes. I had no problem with white moulds, but was scared to do a blue. Um, as long as the little, um, if you've got the red ones, Heidi, the little pop top, keep it closed. Don't, don't have it open because it will um, contaminate through your cheese fridge and just lurk on the walls ready for you to do a natural rind cheese without a ripening box um yeah it's very cool um patricia says um it does have subtitles in polish the closed caption function has a recept a respectable english translation google um translate filled in the gaps his recipes are quite good yeah from what i saw patricia they're great and like I said, I'm very surprised that it doesn't have a bigger audience. Um, I kind of likened it to um, to my early um, cheese making videos where I don't think I even had narration. And if I did, the audio was so bad that nobody could hear it anyway. 
But yeah, great channel. I, I do like it a lot. I don't know how that slipped through the loop. Um, <clears throat> Anthony says, um, I know nothing about manufacturing, but this seems like a money-making opportunity uh, if you get manufacturing. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Um, I'm not into plastics personally, and I can imagine how much it costs just to make the dye or the mold to make those plastic boxes. Um, yeah, I think I'll skip it. But thanks for the suggestion, Anthony. Um, uh, blue gets into everything. My two pound Parmesan puck kept getting blue stripes, as they do. Um, annoying fan says, uh, I guess I'll buy a separate little fridge for them. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, look, in my experience, I've got one cheese fridge and, you know, re rarely do I have too many problems at all. Um, all Out of Spoons says, my vacuum packed cheese are having moisture in them. Asiago, Chowder and Cheddar. Opened them and dried them again. How do I know when to vacuum pack? Thanks for the awesome content. Okay, so the the rule of thumb that I use is that the uh, cheese should be touch dry once it's dried. So that means that it should feel a little bit like a clammy handshake, if that makes sense to you. Um, so they're not wet, but they're not dry. Uh, and that way the moisture doesn't pull out of the, the cheese when uh, it's vacuum packed. Because what you're doing, you're changing the obviously excluding all the air but you're also changing the atmospheric pressure within the bag um and it and it does squeeze the cheese um yeah so they've they've got to be dry air dry before you pop them in the bags and vacuum pack them up so that that's the only tip i've got there um uh nico says i got into this channel today because of another passionate youtuber mentioned you oh thank you um i can only thank you for what you're doing looking forward to eating your videos <laughs> eating your videos watching maybe to learn more asap um so cool nico who was the youtube that um, recommended me i'll go and check out their channel so thanks mate um uh, yusuf says um, hello from egypt can you use yogurt as a starter culture Yes, you can. I have for, um, oh, what was it? Um, yeah, so I, I made a provolone once. So a, um, uh, ba, 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 a pasta filata cheese, a stretch curd cheese, one you stretch like mozzarella. But this was for provolone and I used yogurt as the starter culture and it worked. Took quite a few hours, unfortunately, for it to acidify enough so I could stretch it. But I did use yogurt as a starter culture for a pasta filata cheese. Um, and as um, Persnickety says, you can use buttermilk. Um, so cultured buttermilk is another way. You can use a starter culture. Um, and that's a mesophilic starter culture. So yogurt is a thermophilic starter culture. Buttermilk is a mesophilic, aromatic mesophilic starter culture. Um, uh, there must be a question I mix, miss, missed there. There it is. Sir, do you know about Joa salt? Um, say, all right, Patricia's already come up with the answer. That's good because I didn't know what it was. Um, Joa SK75 is commonly used to stabilize and emulsify processed cheese spread sources and beverage products. It contains 60 to 70% less sodium uh, comparable to sodium based salts yeah it wouldn't work in normal cheese then um which i think that's what patricia was alluding to uh if you're going to make normal cheese then yeah you can't use that sort of salt you have to use sodium chloride um so uh that salt is the perfect salt for cheese making go and check out that blog post that i posted before um last 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 question thank you i i thought i had just passed a clammy handshake i'm stumped i'm using a vacuum canister machine which puts a fair amount of pressure will it hurt the cheese aging in a small amount of liquid no and the liquid you see i um i'll show this when i do the the vegemite cheese um taste test 
there's just a tiny you can really small amount of liquid in the veins of the bag um and that's okay when you open up the bag you'll hardly see it at all so tiny little bit of liquid it won't matter if it looks like a lot of liquid then yeah it's bad pull it out dry it off and you're all good anyway um uh that's it for today oh valerie sorry i'm late <laughs> i'm just about to finish off valerie sorry um thanks for watching curd nerds it's now ooh, nine o'clock my time time to go and have my breakfast um thanks one and all i really appreciate it um don't forget that if you want to learn how to make cheese and there's quite a few people that have done this course go to the curd nerd academy courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au uh, there is a beginner's course there which you learn to make nine different cheeses um, all it's a structured course so unlike the youtube channel where it is all over the place and i pick a cheese and make one this is a structured course you learn how to make from easy to difficult um, and yeah there's nine recipes there don't forget you can pick up your cheese making supplies at littlegreenworkshops.com.au we ship to lots of countries now i've gone through the list of all the available shipping that Australia Post, our, our provider, um, and I've gone through and updated our website, Little Green Workshops, and you should be able to get in most countries, except for the ones that are prohibited by sanctions and don't allow uh, lactic bacteria into the country and stuff like that. Um, so, and um, countries we've had problems with before. Anyway, so, um, and don't forget, there's merch over at the merch shop, merch.cheeseman.tv. You get an amazing mug like that. Aprons, like you can see behind there. They're hanging up, lots of aprons. Um, and other cool stuff. T-shirts, I've got T-shirts. Don't you worry about that. So you can go check all that stuff out there. Thank you to everybody who did a super chat today. I appreciate it. And thank you to all the members, both on YouTube and Patreon. I appreciate it your financial support to keep the show going. All right, thanks for watching, Kerr Nerds, and I'll see you on Wednesday night. Bye-bye.